Welcome to this video. We are going to solve problems involving uh, energy mass equivalence, but before we start, I just want to point out that I've, I'm posting, and I have posted, a key for number 7, and also the other problems assigned uh, for homework. So make sure you check the key, because there is a chance you might see this question again, maybe on a test. And I think this would be, you know, this has appeared on past IB exams. It would be maybe a four-point question, and you want to make sure in your notes you have down the four crucial points which would earn those four marks. So check the key, put those down into your into your notes, and make sure they, they make sense. Okay, before we do energy mass equivalence, first we need to understand what the unified atomic mass unit is. We start out with a single atom of carbon-12. An atom has electrons and a nucleus. Here's the nucleus. You've got six protons, and you've got six neutrons. So that's four. Let me draw two more. Then you have, in a carbon-12 nucleus, uh, sorry, atom, you have six electrons buzzing around the outside, flying around. If you take the mass of this entire atom, not just the nucleus, the whole thing, and you divide it by 12, that's the unified atomic mass unit. It's defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12. Let's see, is it just the nucleus, or is it the entire atom? It's the entire atom. The data booklet contains a conversion for getting between kilograms and unified atomic mass units. If we look in the data booklet, we see, I guess the way it's written is 1u equals 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. But then they also have 931.5 mega electron volts per c squared. Is this a unit for mass? Mega electron volts per c squared? Let's take a look. If I give you, we're going to make a chart, a really useful chart, how to convert between mass and energy. Oops. This, you want to put this in your notes somewhere. This is, maybe it's not that big. One of the most important things for this unit, understanding the ways to convert between mass and energy. If I simply give you 2 kilograms of mass, and I say, what's the energy? There are problems, by the way, coming that look just like that. Well, to get from mass in kilograms to energy in joules, you convert using E equals mc squared. All right, then, let me just use E equals mc squared, figure out what my energy is. I plug in, whoops. I plug in the 2 kilograms, I plug in the 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light in a vacuum. That's a constant, right? It's always that value. Uh, I Okay, 2 times 3, that's 6, times 10 to the 8. But what's my unit? Well, I square the meters and I square the seconds. A kilogram times 1 of the meters per second squared is a newton, and the newton times the other meter is a joule. I could also write this if I wanted to be fancy. I've got 10 to the 8, so there's 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 2. 10 to the 6 is mega, and the other 10 to the 2 would make it 600. <clears throat> so now, okay, we just converted from kilograms to joules, or megajoules as it were, and we used E equals mc squared. But what if I gave you the mass in atomic mass units? Okay, we're not going to use E equals mc squared. Let me put that equation down and show you a little trick that sidesteps the equation altogether. If you plug in, this is going to seem like it's coming out of nowhere. If you plug in that much energy, and you say, okay, how much mass is that? What's the value of m? 
m is the unknown, notice I'm not plugging in 3 times 10 to the 8. Well, let's divide by c squared. And first of all, apparently this is a unit of energy. I mean, I'm not plugging in 3 times 10 to the 8, I'm leaving it as a variable, but I'm kind of incorporating it into the unit of mass. It's a unit of mass, not energy, pardon me. <clears throat> uh, but, okay, well, let's say that you went ahead. You plugged in, mega is 10 to the 6. The electron volt, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules. C, you can plug in the 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second square, uh, per second, gosh. And you did all this calculation, and you converted the mass into kilograms. Guess what you get? you get the unified atomic mass unit. You get this many kilograms, which is equal to 1 U. Well, what does that mean? It means we can immediately know 1 U, that amount, 1 U, gives us this much mass, or energy, rather. So 1 U, we can convert straight from 1 U into mega, that's 10 to the 6 electron volts, million electron volts, and the conversion is this conversion factor, 931.5 uh, MeV equals 1U. Okay, that's a really, really important conversion factor, and we will use that uh, routinely throughout. And those are really the two main ways to convert. Let's see a problem. We're going to skip down. Uh, so go ahead and answer number one. <clears throat> okay, a 150-pound person has a rest mass of 68 kilograms. Determine the amount of energy this person possesses due to his mass. Hmm. Well, can I just use 931.5 MeV per U? Well, we're given the mass in kilograms, and we're going to calculate the energy in joules... So whenever you're going from kilograms to joules, you use E equals MC squared, and you plug in the value. So plug in the mass, plug in the C square, the value of C, square it, and calculate the energy in joules. <clears throat> Number three, determine the amount of mass energy possessed by something with 15 U. Express your answer in joules and giga electron volts. Well, here's what I want to do. I want to say 15 U. I can convert straight from U into mega electron volts. 1 U is equal to 931.5 mega electron volts. I cancel out the U. When I, cr uh, when I multiply this out, what's 15 times 931.5? 13,972.5 mega electron volts. Mega is 10 to the 6. They want me con to convert to, uh, to express the answer in giga electron volts. Huh, giga electron volts. Well, giga is 10 to the 9. So I need, I, I need to take away 10 to the 6, and I need to take away 10 to the 3, and replace it, replace that 10 to the 9 with a giga. So here's 10 to the 6, here's 10 to the 3. I'm going to remove those powers of 10, and I'll have 13.97 times 10 to the 9 electron volts, and I'm going to replace the 10 to the 9 with giga. Okay, so that's part B. I solved B first. Look at that. You can solve A in two ways. Either you can convert your 15U, convert it to kilograms, then use E equals MC squared, and get the energy in joules. That's one approach. But the other approach you might consider, once you know how many giga electron volts there are, Giga, we can get rid of and replace with 10 to the 9. 
electron volts we can get rid of. If you have E on one side, you need the conversion on the other. And so you can convert whatever number of giga electron volts, I can't remember, 14. If we do sig figs, it was 14.0. Um, you know, you just cancel out the giga electron volt, sorry, the giga. Cancel out the electron volts, and you'll be left with joules. That's the other approach. And it should give you this answer. Okay, a nucleus has this rest mass. State the energy when it is at rest. Express your answer in giga electron volts. Wait a second, is this a unit of mass or energy? Isn't MeV mass? But it has the C to the negative 2. Here's how you can think about this. We're not going to do this every single time, but if you plug in the mass that was given, well, it's 160 mega electron volts per C squared. The C squared uh, in the denominator and the C squared in the numerator, well, anything divided by itself is 1. So look at what we have. We just got the answer. It's 160 MeV. That's why this is such a wonderful unit of mass. If you want to convert to, this, to the value of energy, you just drop the C to the negative 2. And that is another conversion factor. Let's write that down in our chart. If you are given MeV C to the negative 2, how do you convert? You simply drop, you get rid of the C to the negative 2, and now you have your energy in mega electron volts. That's convenient. Oops. On to the next one. So that's the answer, except that they want giga. Okay. The a formal way you can do it, get rid of the mega. You always put the power of 10 on the other side of the fraction. I'm adding giga into the numerator. Power of 10 goes to the other side of the fraction. That's going to be uh, 10 to the negative 3, or divided by 10 to the 3. And if you work this out, all right, 1, 2, 3. I've got a, you know, I've got 10 to the 3 in the denominator, so I take away 3 powers of 10. You get this.